Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Sanjay Parashar and today is the session number four for our tutorial series of Mule ASP. And today we will try to connect to an Oracle database using a Mule application. However, Mule supports to connect to different databases like MySQL or Java Derby and many others. However, as per our, as per our demo today, we will be connecting to an Oracle database. So for this demo, I have created a table employees with employee ID, employee name and company name and I have inserted five records in there. So let's see how the data looks in database. So this is the table, let's query it and we have five employees as part of this particular table named employees. So let's start with our demo. So in AnyPoint Studio 7.5, I have created one project, IG underscore Oracle DB demo. Here we will, as a triggering point of our application, we are going to configure an HTTP listener. And we'll keep everything as default and click on OK. And as and as part of resource path, we will give something like db demo and we can save it. So now our STP listener is completed. We have configured uh, the connection and we have given a path. In the method section, we are going to keep it get and post both. And to connect to a database, we have the database module where we have this select operation so you can drag and drop this select from mule palette to mule canvas like this and as you can see we have a database module added to our default list and these are the all operations that you can do that you can perform on any database that are supported as part of mule so as part of this poc we are using this particular select operation. Here we will need to configure the database configurations and provide the query which we want to use. So let's first do the basic settings and connection configurations. Here first we will select what sort of connection do we have. We have the Oracle connection. However, as you can see we have different other connections as well that support that is supported by me here that oracle jdbc driver we have either we can add the maven dependencies or we can upload the jar we can download the supporting jar from google and we can upload it here so i have downloaded that for oracle jdbc driver and i'm going to upload that now so this is the jar that i have downloaded from google for Oracle JDBC drivers and I'll select this one. Click on OK. So once you have uploaded that driver jar, you are supposed to provide the DB connection details here. The host for me, it's local host. Port is the default one, 1521. User is system. And the instance ID is ORC here. You can test this connection here. Test connection successful. We can click on OK. Click on OK here. For these database details, you can go here to check what are the database details that you have. However, you have to know the password of that database. Once it is sorted, we will give an SQL query here. Let's give, let's select everything which is there as part of employees table. And now we have a trigger point of our mule application. We are selecting everything that we have in there. And now we want to send 
that REST, REST API, we want to send the entire payload to the user. We will be using the set payload event processor for this particular task and payload is already there. However, this select operator or uh, the database event usually returns a Java object, the data within the Java object. So we will need to use data weave to transfer or to transform that Java object to a readable format like JSON or something. So for our tutorial, we will drag and drop this transform message and rather than this Java, we will keep, keep it as JSON and we want the entire payload to be sent as an output of this in the JSON format. Let's save it and now let's deploy this service to our new runtime after saving this of course and meanwhile we can get ready with the uh, web service client where we are we are going to trigger this particular new application So it is initializing this mule application right now. It is deployed and now let's test it. So as we can see, as part of output of that particular query, we have got all five employees as in json array so we have uh, five records like we have in the table right now sanjay james peter bob and ron and as part of output we have got that as a part of array and now as we have received the output the desired output just for the demonstration purpose why exactly we needed to change the payload to JSON is let's log what that uh, database returned. So let's log the entire payload. And to check, let's clear the console. So it is started, the application is started. Now let's retest it. So it is successfully triggered. We have got the JSON payload which we converted. And now if by this logger, we will see that one Java string has been returned, which would not make any sense uh, to a human eye. However, that is the reason why we need it to transform the java payload to the json payload so that we can understand what it is so this is it for today's session however in next session we will learn how we can actually pass the input parameters dynamically to database so that we can filter out this query in other words we can provide a where clause to this particular query so thank you so much guys for watching and take good care of yourselves and you have a nice rest of the day. Bye bye.